Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Vitek Academy. You're about to get schooled. Five years ago, I did this. I rolled my land speed insight. That was a great car. I really enjoyed it. Well, I'd like to introduce you guys to my new project car. I've got another Insight. The original Insight was called Project Epiphany. This new Insight over here, I'd like to introduce you to, I'm going to call Epiphany 2. First order of business is to do a case swap. Now, I actually bought three of these cars, not one. This particular one is going to be my street car, and it's going to be called Epiphany 2, the number 2. I have another one that I'm going to set up for some track use and maybe some airport runway stuff, and I'm going to call that Epiphany 2, spelled T-O-O. -O. And then I have my third one, which is actually my land speed racing project car, which I've just started a little while ago, and that one's going to be called Another Epiphany. Anyway, I was hoping this car would actually be a little less painful than the original Project Epiphany. But last night, it got me right there. I was leaning over in the engine bay, replacing the battery, and I leaned right into the corner here and it got me. So I had another Epiphany. I decided to wait till it was daylight and I could see what I was doing. So I'm down here today to load it up on the trailer, get it back to the house, and start the engine swap. <laughs> Hey guys, we are here with Project Epiphany. You may remember it's one of my three Honda Insights. It's going to be getting an engine swap. This particular one is going to be for street use. Now the first thing we have to do doesn't even have anything to do with the engine. We're starting with removing the battery. Now you may want to consult a manual or have a professional do this because the battery system has about 144 volts in it, which is enough to kill you. But here at VTech Academy, we do our own stunts. So let's get started. Now the sequence for doing this is the first thing we're going to do is remove all this kind of carpeting that's in here. Uh, there's a box for uh, like tools and stuff or uh, kind of like a little glove box that's back here. After we get all this carpeting out, uh, we go into the actual battery box and we turn off the power. Uh, we are going to do a little test on it to see if there's uh, any residual voltage to make sure that we're not going to get shocked. After that, we start removing all the covers and we'll take it all out of there. Uh, there's actually a special tool from Honda for lifting it out. It makes it a little bit easier to handle. We don't have that tool, but we should be able to get in there pretty easily and lift it. It's not really that heavy. This is the power switch. It's actually underneath this plate right here. It 
there's a little safety that's on top of it to prevent it from moving. Flip it to the off position, put the safety back on so it can't accidentally get knocked in the on position. And now we can disassemble everything. How many volts? None. That's less than 30. We're good. So we're at the part that can kill you if you're not doing it correctly. Uh, we've gotten all the interior pieces out of the way and a lot of the battery covers and supports. Uh, we just disconnected the big two power wires. We insulated those as per the manual. And the next thing we need to do is actually unbolt the cassette from the rest of the IMA. Once we have that done, we can pull the batteries out and then we'll be totally safe. And we can go to work on disassembling the uh, rest of the unit in order to get it out. It has a few large cables that kind of go through it, so we need to do a little disassembly there in, able, in order to pull it out properly. What I think we need to do is build a race car. Take these out. This will allow us access to the cables, okay? And then uh, just start disassembling everything, just kind of pull it out piece by piece. And then this framework will come out at some point. Of room for activities. Yeah, I mean, we're going to need to make a plug for this because that's actually the fuel tank uh, access right there. And a plug in the rear for the, I guess, the air exit. That was the air exit for the batteries. Yeah. Um, that goes straight to the ground. Yep, exactly. Uh, it would be hard to put an interior back in this car just because of the height that's built up and all the waste of space. I feel like that'd be uh, useless to put the rear shelf back in. I agree. I We may try to figure out something to kind of cover it generally, but I think. Maybe just a, a plate that goes back to cover the spare. And I'm thinking roll bar. Yeah, I like roll bar. Roll yeah. bar would be cool. I mean, it's going to be a fast car and we're going to do, uh, you know, maybe some half mile events and stuff like that, even in the street car just for fun. Yeah, I mean, we can tie into this. We'll put a couple of posts back 
Uh, yeah, I think a roll bar is a great idea, and I think I would like to uh, have that s extra side and side protection. It's such a small car. It is getting hit by anything. Uh, this car, although still built by Honda, would crumple. Yeah, agreed. So, uh, so yeah, I'll probably go talk to uh, uh, Whitfield and uh, see what we can do on that. We need to make sure there's room for the seats, though, so that you can sit in it. Six foot one in a Honda doesn't normally work. Yeah. But, um, yeah, these seats actually are pretty low, so I think that'll work out okay. Yeah, they made this car for uh, low seating. Yeah. So, uh, we have uh, finished for today. Uh, we took everything out of the back. Uh, uh, the next step is to pull the engine out of the car, uh, also to get rid of some of the uh, extra wiring that we don't need, um, and uh, start gathering the parts of the case swap. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on VTech Academy. Uh, we'll see you next time. By the way, if you're interested in uh, helping us out a little bit, head over to our website, vtechacademy.com. You can buy t-shirts with our logo on it, and that helps us bring more projects to you. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, and we have a Facebook page. And I'd like to thank you again for coming out and seeing us.